Well, once again, happy St. Patrick's Day from the Oklahoma's Video Studio. Dave Morris here. Happy to be joined by Lynn Oliver and Henry Winkler. Happy guys, it's great here. to meet you guys. Thanks for stopping by. David, it is a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, happy St. Patrick's Day to you, you guys. Thank You're, you. We're, Thank wearing you. Green. we're both wearing green. You we both can't have be the pinched. green. It's, it's accomplished. <laughs> Uh, they are best-selling authors of the Here's, well, in this case, Here's Hank series, uh, which I read last night. And let me just say, you had me at pizza. <laughs> you lead off the very first page, very first paragraph. It's pizza. I'm like, well, I'm hooked. I love pizza. That's it's, what it's, every 10-year-old says. And, and every, me, I, I die for pizza. I really do. If I find a good pizza, I sometimes move into the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Henry Winkler, of course, star of Happy Days fame and a long accomplished career in TV and broadcast and, and films. Lynn Oliver, accomplished producer. I feel silly sitting in front of cameras with these two because they're such award-winning, accomplished people. But again, thank you very much. And of course, best-selling authors of this series. In the first page, you explain dyslexia font. What is that? Okay, so we were really lucky because our publishers found this and uh, I'm just going to hold it up, okay? And what happened is a dad in Holland who is dyslexic himself, a graphic artist, he made this font up to make it easier for him to read. And then he realized that this is great for his children who are also dyslexic because learning challenges are hereditary. And we found that the way that this uh, font is used, it makes the I and the page friends. Uh, it's much easier to track the words across the page. The, the, type, uh, the type is larger. It's more heavily weighted at the bottom because if you have a reading problem, the letters tend to float up around the page, so it, it grounds the letters. They go up higher and down lower so you don't co confuse a B and a G. And so what we found is it was created for people with dyslexia, but for all kids, it makes it easier to read. Because when you're seven or eight, you're just learning to read. So it gives them every advantage physically to be able to enjoy the book. Well, this kid, when I was reading the book, it was the same thing. This is a very easy to read book. Mm -hmm. uh, we should say that Hank is the main character, Hank Zipser, and you guys have right. multiple uh, books talking right. about our Hank hero. Hank is me. Hank is short for Henry. And Zipser was a woman who lived on the fourth floor of my apartment building growing up. And we thought it was such a zippy name because Hank Zipser loves his Zipser attitude. You know, he, his glass is half full, he just spills it everywhere. <laughs> I was talking to you guys before we started that it was it's very cinematic, the arc throughout. You know, right. you have the, the pizza off the top. We, we meet our characters who, who we're going to have this uh, story journey with. We meet our, our hero. There's a little bit of drama, there's some resolution, then there's the bigger drama, and there's a second cook-off, and I won't be the spoiler here for the secret ingredient. Um, but, it, you know, and then you have the resolution at the end. Hank has great confidence. Yes, he does. Uh, you, you mentioned the dyslexia font uh, and how that anchors the eye to, to the words and it doesn't float around, because you mentioned that in the book. Hank mentions, uh, to his cousin, I believe, that mm -hmm. yes, I, I know who, what you're talking about, Judith Ann, because the words float for me as well. They used to swim like fish on the page. My eye couldn't focus. I would leave words out. I would add words. Uh, I couldn't see some of the words. And so this font, oh, if I only had it when I was starting to read, anchors everything to the page. But you mentioned before that it's got uh, the drama, the resolution, the second drama, the, and that's because uh, Lynn comes from writing uh, entertainment, writing television uh, series, over a hundred episodes of, uh, of television. So we learned how to tell that story w because you got to keep it moving or people are going to change the channel. We hope that they keep moving and buy the next book. I think it's important to add that while there's drama in the stories, our books are essentially comedies. So what we're intending to do is introduce kids to reading by making them laugh. So when you laugh, you're having a good time, it's a pleasant experience, and then 
you want to have more and you want to have more. So our books are really gateway books to, for children to learn the love of reading first. Yeah, chapter two has a quiz, for example, of uh, foods that Hank could uh, cook, create with one hand tied behind his back. It's, it's true. Toast, it's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Absolutely, with very grape, easy. With grape and strawberry. I right, believe. a glass of ice water, you just don't put too much ice in there or your lips will stick to the glass. <laughs> a peanut butter um, sandwich, you take small bites or you'll never open your mouth again. <laughs> uh, s'mores. Make sure that you melt the marshmallow really well or it's going to taste like the inside of a pillow. <laughs> Trail mix. <laughs> this is his favorite. <laughs> Trail mix. Put a bunch of raisins in a plastic bag. Then you leave out the nuts, the seeds, and all the stuff that look like pebbles. Some people might call this a bag of raisins. We call this the perfect Hank trail mix. <laughs> Lynn, what's it like riding with this guy? It's a lot of fun. We have a great time. We, we're together in my office. We collaborate on every page because we both come from television, which is a collaborative medium. So we, uh, we come up with the idea. We beat out the story, then we write the scenes, we argue a lot. Um, good nature. I, good nature to maybe argue. Maybe debate. I, I can't picture the two of you guys arguing. Well, yeah. we have well, hot... She's a we, very strong woman. <laughs> and she has uh, strong opinions. And he's a very strong man who has strong opinions. But this is but, a good thing, because you're both creative people. No, yeah. that's right. It's not arguing. It's, and if it's we a, don't make each other laugh, it doesn't go in the book. And we do different things. Lynn um, sits at the computer and types and I walk around and talk. And then Lynn has an idea and then I stop and then Lynn just types away and then reads it back to me. But Lynn also knows everything about uh, children's literature because she is the co-founder of an organization with 25,000 members which are children's books writers and illustrators. Lynn has taught me uh, from the ground up all of the rules of writing a book. Doesn't even matter whether it's for children or not. There are real rules. Lynn knows them all. <laughs> it's a great collaboration because Henry is the one between the two of us who grew up being dyslexic. So all the emotional moments, the ones that ring really true to kids. We get letters all the time from kids who say, how did you know me so well? Well, we know them so well because these are things that he experienced the frustration, the the anger, the punishment that you get from not being successful in school, he had all of that experience. So along with the laughter, there's always a at the bottom of it a true moment. And so that he always provides that. If it were me, I would probably go off more into a joke kind of thing. But he always pulls it us back so that what we're writing is never writing down to the kids, but talking about their emotional truth. You could tell when Hank and Judith Ann were both in the contest uh, cooking, she would get frustrated, things would fall apart for her, and Hank was like, I can relate to that. You know, he, he understood what she was going through. You know, uh, you, you bring up a, a really good point because that is a subsection B um, uh, hope for us, which is that children who are not learning challenged go, oh, not only did I laugh, but that's why Ashley is the way she is. That's why Sean is the way he is. And that they understand each other, you know? That you see a child in your class, you're doing very well, they're not doing so well. You can actually go up and say, you know what? I can help you with that. We would like that too. We should mention that uh these two lovely people are in town for uh, some good causes. You're at the Boys and Girls Club this afternoon, right? We are. Three o'clock this afternoon. We're speaking at the Boys and Girls Club. And so, what will you talk about there? Well, we have a particular message to kids, which has to do with learning who you are and what the best way to achieve your goals is. So, what we tell kids is that how you do in school is not reflective of your intelligence, that there are all kinds of different intelligence. And doing well on a test in school is really one very small measure of what your talents are. And we also talk to parents. The parents show up, they come, and we say to them, look, 
your child is not trying to be a pain in the neck from the moment they wake up. They're doing, they're doing the best they can. Our job as adults, for any child in your life, whether they are your own children, your niece or nephew, your next door neighbor, is to buoy their self-image. A child knows they don't do well. They're seeing that they're not keeping up in the class. Their self-image is plummeting like a stone to the bottom of an ocean. We've got to make sure they're comfortable enough, confident enough to fly to meet their destiny. Boys and Girls Clubs this afternoon at 3 o'clock, and then later this evening, Best of Books. Yeah, we're really Edmond. looking forward to that. Our friend Joe Hyde, Best of Books there, and, and how will that go? Well, first of all, we love to support the independent bookstore, and Best of Books is known across the country as being a, a great establishment. So it's really important to us to, to make our appearances at independent bookstores and to serve the local community That's and great. the local business person. We love that. We have a PowerPoint. We show pictures of our lives, our dogs. We have a wonderful time all together. It, it, one of our favorite things to do is when we get to talk to children and just say, you've got greatness inside you. Your job is to figure out what your gift is, dig it out, give it to the world. I saw you on Fox News recently, uh, perhaps within the past couple of weeks. You're yes. sitting down reading to the kids. Yes. You really connect with them. I don't want another child on this earth to feel the shame that, and the humiliation that I felt. No one understood me when I was in school. I am older now. I can go right back to that dark place. I want every child to know that whatever their gift is, the world needs what they're doing. If they're great at milking cows, if they're great at singing, if they're great at logarithms, the world needs what they're good at. There's space on this planet for everybody, you right? bet. And I don't know why we like exalt the um, exalt the the top ten percent in the class, and then you know make fun of the bottom three. You were diagnosed with dyslexia, or if that's the proper term or not, uh, in early thirties, right? Yes, thirty-one. Thirty-one. Um, how did that change your life after that? First thing was, I found out um, because our uh, youngest, uh, our oldest son. Uh, was diagnosed and I got so angry. I was really, really angry. All of that yelling, all of that punishment, all of that name calling and humiliation was for nothing. I actually had something with a name. I wasn't trying to be lazy or stupid. Then you even out and you go, Okay, now I know what it is. I feel a little bit better. And then I came to the realization I might not be sitting in between you two people if I did not fight through um, having this learning challenge when I was younger. I might not have the career, the wonderful life I have, if I didn't have to fight through it. What gave you that fight? What, what got you through Yale? I knew, well, I, I got into Yale in the graduate school. I didn't go undergraduate. I would never have gotten in undergraduate. I got in because I auditioned for the drama school. Um, and that, I'm very proud of that, but uh, trust me, I know my limitations. But what gave me the fight was I always knew what my dream was, and I never let my dream go. I never went... I would do it in every other area. I would go, well, you are stupid. You must be. People have told you that for so long. Oh, well, you can't do that because you're dyslexic. Oh, I'm not even going to try. But when it came to my dream about being an actor, I'm telling you, I was on fire. I could eat through brick. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It, it, and so then I know that's another lesson I learned for children. That, you have a will inside you. You never let that will go. Along that vein, one last question for you guys. Um, any advice to parents? You deal with a lot of parents. You get a lot of feedback from, from your publications here. Any advice to parents on dealing with their youngsters and perhaps challenges that they are aware of or maybe even not aware of? I have uh, 
yes. What I think is the most important job of a parent is to really look at your child and help them figure out who they are and then provide a pathway to excellence for who they are. I think what, what contemporary society has encouraged us to do is try and raise children who are competent across everything. And so you feel that your child has failed if they're not great at everything. No one really is. So there, there's a very famous educational psychologist who wrote a book about learning differences. And he said, if your child has a reading problem, don't get them a reading tutor, get them an art teacher. So you find, you help your child find what they love, what their passion is, what they're going to excel at, and then provide those opportunities rather than try to make them good at everything, because no one is. And for me, it is what we did. As long as our children, and all three of our children, are dyslexic because it's hereditary, as long as they try as hard as they can, whatever the grades that they bring home are good enough. If they don't try, that's when there is a consequence. But I will tell you, if you make your child comfortable enough, they will meet who they're supposed to be. My oldest son is an executive. My daughter is, a, who didn't even finish college, is the most incredible teacher in preschool. But I mean like I wish I knew her when I was a young parent, I would do exactly what she's doing now with her children. My youngest son, a director, producer, uh, a writer, they all meet their destiny. They are all good human beings on this planet if you support them. One last point, uh, of course he starred as, as the Fonz on I Happy did. Days, the leather jackets in the yes. Smithsonian, uh, you know, you see the movie uh, the Martian in the book, and there's that A hey, reference. <laughs> Isn't that great? It's li lived on in pop culture. What is your thought when you see these things pop I, up? You know what? It is a great compliment. I love the Fonz. Uh, he, he built a house around me. He put food on my table, sent my kids to college, introduced me to the world, and I did that all by saying E. <laughs> and then I added one word, whoa. <laughs> and I built a career on that. Not bad. Henry Winkler, Lynn Oliver, guys, it's been a pleasure to yeah, meet you. I enjoyed you. the it's conversation. Uh, the book we referenced, by the way, here's Hank, you can't drink a meatball through a straw, which is a perfect I reference. I tried it to. once and I passed out. <laughs> sure to pick up these books, uh, Best of Books up in Edmond and your other local bookstores. Can I just well. say, because I have no shame, this is the seventh of a 12-book series that we're writing. So there, if your child likes this, there are six others to enjoy. It's a best-selling series, and it's a good read. Guys, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dave.